so the first thing on the uh, our agenda was to bring you up to speed on the bicentennial seawall uh, repair. Uh, Jen's going to brief you on that because some of the numbers have been coming in uh, fast and furious to just today. So since we last met and did an update, uh, we had reached out uh, to some contractors to find out um, what could we do or what should we do based on our engineer's recommendation to uh, temporary repair. And I'm calling it temporary uh, because it's protection, it's stabilization. Uh, what do we need to do uh, to get that well so we don't lose it during a storm, um, whether it slides in, falls over. The idea is to use the revetment stone very similar to what the state has done. Uh, it would come out about 16 feet from the wall. It's large stone, it would be stacked up, basically be used for wave breaking um, and wave reflection at the wall base uh, in an effort to hold it there until we can get to such point in time to have a final design permits um, and a, what I'm gonna call the final repair. So when I'm saying temporary and final, final being the, the reconstruction. Um, those numbers have been coming in um, we're using about 180,000 as a placeholder. Um, that's what we're understanding from uh, any type of temporary permit uh, application, any type of the contractor's fees. What we're finding every day we go down there, and we went down with DOT today, uh, walked the site with them uh, to talk about the drainage outfall that needs some work. Uh, I went out with the engineer. Uh, last week is the sand is still eroding. So more and more of that foundation to the actual seawall is being exposed. And we're actually now seeing old pieces of wall that have come over uh, in time that used to be covered over in sand with large pieces of rebar sticking up. Uh, so again, you know, in our mind, safety, 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 not wanting people down uh, by the rebar that's sticking out and then those costs to remove those broken pieces of concrete and the rebar to get them out of there and to bring in the stone is what's in that 180. Um, tie and bond has produced uh, the memo that was replaced what I had originally sent to you. They did a formal memo that is on the website. Uh, we have notified, uh, I think I'm gonna try to go through the whole list here, but it's DES, NHDOT, Army Corps, Coast Guard, um, all of you, and I know I'm missing someone, so I apologize, but we really to get out there and, and not just uh, to let them know that we're having an issue, but in the event that there were failure to ask for assistance uh, to, to work with us uh, through the process. So with that, um, Time Bond has written a final report, so meaning everything in report form, uh, some old pictures of the old Coast Guard station, uh, the historical accounts, the concrete reactions that are going on with the existing wall. They've made some recommendations as far as how would we like to move forward in the future. Um, those are things that we just received that Chris and I will need to go through so we can intelligently bring the engineer with us uh, to, to show you those options. But looking to present you with this information and try to determine a next step. Um, the protection of the wall or the temporary repair at 180, uh, that is a fee to go into the design, you know, for the new wall, for what would be the permanent fix, uh, there's also a fee. There's the engineering, permitting, design. Uh, we'd be looking to do grants, uh, grant assistance. Um, and if you put that all together, it's about uh, 298,000. And then there's the cost of the wall replacement, which the engineer's estimates have come in uh, between, and depending on, again, the choices that we'd wanna go through with you, you know, between 1.8 and 2.2 million. So that 2 million we gave you the other day was smack dab in the middle, but the uh, costs that have come in to match what they're recommending are um, in that range. So. That's what we've been busy trying to get our hands wrapped around and do and uh, move forward. I think from here, Chris, what are your thoughts? We're, we're at a um, turning point. Um, I saw the pictures from two weeks ago. Um, I was amazed at the way the wall looks today. Uh, on the s northern end 
where the ramp is that goes down to the to the ocean. There's a whole new section. Obviously, there was a wall there. There's a whole new footing exposed uh, that no one knew was there. Um, there's rebar exposed. Um, along the front of the wall, I'm even perplexed how to, I want to permanently uh, cordon it off because there's pointed pieces of rebar there, um, pieces of metal literally sticking out of the wall. And it's obvious that this wall that's present today is actually built behind one that was there before. And the reason why we never saw it is it was under four feet of sand. Well, that four feet of sand is not there anymore. The whole bottom of the wall is exposed. Um, if any one was under the impression that the wall will make it through the winter, I don't think that impression, that you should stick with that impression. Um, it's obvious that a really good storm is just going to come along and erode the sand out from the bottom of the wall, and it will either tip forward or fall depending on how the erosion goes, uh, tip forward or backwards. Uh, Jennifer was correct. We did meet and we, we talked with, uh, or sent an email, I should say, to uh, the Division Six engineer a week ago at the urging of Ty and Bond to say, um, hey, we need, you, you've got something out there too. They've got a uh, pipe that uh, takes discharges or carries the discharge water off of Route 1 um, that's fully exposed more than I've ever seen it. Um, it used to be the whole pipe was, was covered. It's, it's fully exposed now. It's losing the water. Uh, About halfway down. When halfway. we say fully exposed, you can see that part A of the pipe doesn't connect to part B. There's actually a void in the concrete pipe. So we met with the gentleman we met with is Ralph Sanders. He's uh, one of the, um, I call him a field engineer. He's the guy that they assign when there's a problem. Ralph, go look at it. Uh, very um, decent and uh, honorable gentleman to work with. We've worked together in the past. Um, Ralph's even perplexed where he's going to find the money, but it's obvious to him that he's got an immediate problem also because this is a conduit that could allow beach water back in <coughs> on Route 1. And he, we even walked the top of the wall and he saw some of the erosion and already the walls being overtopped. There's a rivulet probably the width of this desk where water's currently going down to route one and uh, so he he fully understands the the, the problem um, he and I and, and Jennifer all had to talk about the the process that it's going to take to get this uh, going um, the issues that he faces on his side and our side so there's two things that are that, that are going on or that need to be happened. There's the immediate concern of the safety of the seawall, uh, the need to put the revetment stone in now, and then there's the uh, follow-through that we need to do to make sure that hopefully that the uh, warrant article for the seawall gets approved in March. Um, those are the two things that we need to do now. As Jennifer stated, that you know the short-term costs. It's 180 right now to put the revetment stone on the other side. Stones that are probably two and three size, the time, two or three times the size of this table. That's the only thing that'll that'll handle it. Um, we see that how the stones that we had there before have either been um, literally pushed around like toys. The to the stones that are only half the size of this table in height or in thickness, they're literally just being pushed around. Um, but then if we want to get something done, we ought to think about uh, encumbering some money and proceeding through with a design contract now because it's going to take six to nine months to get this permitted, even with an emergency permit. We just can't. This isn't something that you emergency permit and go out next week and start, start working on a repair. So right. That's and, the, we've, and we've had initial conversations with DES uh, regarding that emergency notification. So even to do... Uh, the revetment, the protection end of this, we will need an emergency permit. Um, it would be issued in a similar fashion when the force main. Uh, we work with Evan Lewis up at the state. Uh, it's a very open communication. They understand it needs to be done. Uh, Collis Adams and Evan, have, I've spoken to both of them at this point uh, through email, and they understand the situation. But then there's the whole other permitting. So when I say the final or the, the wall replacement or in repair, I mean, that's another six to nine process, and that's the full... Uh, dredge and fill permit. 
So there's two cycles that have to get be gone through. Fred, do you have anything you want to add to it, or? Or to the board? <clears throat> well, obviously the $180,000 is going to come out of the existing budget. So it can't come from anywhere else. So the board would have to give direction to divert whatever funds are available in the town, the town appropriation schedule to, to meet that criteria if they agree. True. Uh, two, uh, we will need all the information that's required to put together a warrant article. We already have an article, but uh, as far as funds are concerned and where they would be earmarked, uh, because I think that's fairly well important at this point in time. To you're going to have to uh, basically build a new seawall. Yes. Or it may not be there because you may not be able to get the riprap in front of it in order to protect it. So can you get the riprap? We have, uh, and we've spoken to multiple contractors um, that have the riprap. We have sourcing. The engineer has been working for it. Um, the, this this riprap is five to eight ton rock and. Yeah. You know, trying, and I say it like that because he said that little rock, you know, that little <laughs> rock move. So, I mean, this is, I mean, you're talking four pieces of rock to a flatbed trailer. I mean, it, this is multiple trips and staging and um, is quite a, a laborious yeah. process. And, and, you know, go figure, working with the tide schedule, the daylight schedule and everything else. I mean, it, it's, it's a project. One of the contractors... Uh, um, laid out the process that it was 11 days of hauling stone from their particular source yard stone on a flatbed truck get it here literally lift it off and set it somewhere in that vicinity of bicentennial park and then another three days to a week depending on tide schedule to literally get it set on the other side so that it protects the protects the seawall that it, that the, this almost sounds like a um a re-scripting uh, or a re-explanation of what we gave you for the Church Street Force Main. But, it, but there is a supreme difference in that um, this 180000 that stone that we're going to buy and get transported, can be used in the final implementation, the final design of the seawall. So it isn't like the Force Main where we built a $120,000 road to nowhere to literally have it then pulled back and and we no longer have the road. In this case, we'd spend 180 to get the stone there. We'd have the stone and, already there, and, and it would be used or incorporated in part of the final design, i.e., to even protect the, the seawall once it gets done. Same way the state has revetment stone in front of their seawall. So, in this particular case, it is not a um, frivolous. Uh, it's not it, just it, a means to get somewhere. Yeah, it's actually it, that, part of the right. solution. Right. It's not a ro the road to nowhere. It's revetment stone for the final solution. So are you, you going to need um, heavy, uh, heavy stone, um, small stone, in order to uh, uh, bolster up the existing foundation of the dam? That's, uh, the seawall is there. I'm sure that... I. I hate to call it chink. We call it typically yeah. in the business chinking stone. Right. And normally it's stone I can put my hands around. The chinking stone in this situation would be I can't put my hands around it. Would some of that more than likely have to come? Yes. I don't want to pretend to, to tell the contractors how to do the job, but it's obvious to me that you would need, on every one of these jobs, chinking stones uh, because you just can't literally hold two stones at nine tons apiece. Uh, wedge them up against each other and expect that they're going to stay there without any chinking stones to take up the voids. Right. And these will be embedded, you know, a certain depth, and there will be fabric as well to help migration of fines. Right. I mean, it's part of an engineered temporary solution. Right. And the other thing that we're working on, because it's it's recently exposed in the last three weeks, is all that concrete that you now see down there. I mean, there's there's footings there, but there's actually wall sections that are tipped over still attached to their original footings by the re somehow by the rebar um, all that would need to come out because that's like we can't set this new revetment stone on that it'd be like setting it on marbles it'd just literally wash back out to sea so that's part of the process <coughs> all right well i'll bring it back to the board phil you want uh yes sir thank you uh, uh director and assistant director uh really important stuff uh, the riprap, uh, this big riprap. Uh, if you head up to Rye, they've got riprap right next to 1A. 
Uh, it's next to much smaller walls. The ocean's right there as well. Uh, the buck 80 uh, is a buck 80. Is that what the numbers are? Mm -hmm. uh, and that's just the contracting cost. That doesn't count your time and effort and your integration. That's correct. Okay. Um, and it's, it's something we've known about. I applaud Mr. Welch and your efforts on it. It's dangerous. That's what we're here for. And it speaks to the issue of uh, budgets and it speaks to the issue of people that uh, uh, whittle down and we encourage people to uh, be interested in their budget uh, associations and taxpayers and citizens. And we all pay taxes and nobody wants to pay more than we do. But uh, when these exigencies and contingencies manifest their ugly heads and it endangers uh, public life, public safety, or endangers our way of life, our tax base, our businesses, uh, that's when these uh, people that uh, always whittled down to zero cents, and we had a speaker in here last week that can tell you the cost of everything but the value of nothing. Uh, it's important that we act on it. So I support what you're doing. Thank you, and thank you for uh, coordinating it off down there. I saw your vehicle down there this afternoon in my run. And I know you're on it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, I think this is something that needs to be done, and you know I'm looking to go forward. Gina, I agree. I think it's 180,000. What will we have to make a motion for that we can? We have to take that out of the oh, existing correct? budget. No, we can't take it from reserves. That's going to no, be existing yeah, the, budget. yeah, the existing budget. <clears throat> so, would that be something that could this be done as soon as it? All three contractors that we have spoken to, and, and we'll have to work through that, and you'll see us again, um, you know, with the final contract, um, are all will, able to start now. And we, we, we have the funds? We're going to have to find them in the budget. We're going to start stripping some funds out of the budget in order to do this. But it's an emergency, and, and um, <clears throat> we can't afford to have the seawall disappear, and with it, we're 1A. And, and the park, because that's exactly what happened in the 1700s. So we don't need a repeat of that. So. I agree. Yeah, I agree 100%. Living right down there, living across the street, so I see that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Please do it. Sorry. Yeah. And uh, being an old runner down there, as Mr. Bean said one day, uh, I'm there frequently. And, 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 you know, you can see how dangerous it is. And, and I just hope people realize that it's not something that you're coming here saying, we got you know if that thing I, I think I heard of one other committee or something somebody say do you need that wall you know if that wall, I've seen the water with the wall there come up and run down high street mm -hmm. so I mean the wall is absolutely necessary that there's no I mean we were shown one uh, storm that you, you folks were here I wasn't here then 2010 where uh, sand literally washed up over yeah. you know the beach and the contract then in, in 2010 was 400 and was 400,000 yards of sand that all had to be removed at several hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. It, at least our 180 expenditure, we're getting something of, of value that we can use and reuse. And, it, and it's, uh, I'll say, it's, it's something that can secure the wall for this winter um, so we can rest easier knowing that it'll make it through the winter. I will make a motion that we find some place in the budget Places in the budget. Places in the budget to get the 180,000 to do the repairs or the revetment. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. All right. That, um, and that can happen, like you said, as soon as you can come back. We will start week. working on getting the contracts pulled together and back to Fred and Christina to bring back to you for. And I'm uh, sure tomorrow morning I'll be meeting with Fred to identify accounts and well, monies and, that, and the finance director and we uh, you know we we uh, most of us have been down there and seen the work you've already done to secure what you have down there and we we appreciate that i mean it's we, we wouldn't want to see people injure themselves there's still walkers down there and joggers and yeah it's uh 